This is the journey to One Africa. Monsieur le Président, Distinguished President, Distinguished Heads of State and Delegation, Distinguished Secretary General of the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure and an honor for me to take the floor today on the anniversary of my country's accession to the United Nations to share with you our point of view at this annual meeting at the UN, the most authoritative venue at which to discuss issues pertaining to our common future. Before going any further, allow me to congratulate His Excellency Mr. Dennis Francis, PR of Trinidad and Tobago, elected President of the current session of the General Assembly. I'd like to wish him every success in his mission and assure him of our unreserved support. I also would like to congratulate and thank His Excellency Mr. Chaba Koroshi, outgoing President of the General Assembly, on his brilliant term. I would be remiss not to pay a well-deserved tribute as well to Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, for his commitment and experienced leadership in guiding our organization as it navigates increasingly momentous and complex challenges. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, our common dream of building a stable and peaceful world where present and future generations would flourish is crumbling as the years go by. We hope of a better and more fulfilling life which we all hold dear, is increasingly giving way to anxiety and uncertainty, armed conflicts, terrorism, climate change, large-scale migration, underdevelopment, poverty, political, economic, and financial crises are taking on unprecedented proportions. Every day, we are witnessing shocking and traumatizing scenes that outrage our sense of humanity. Thousands of refugees and displaced persons fleeing conflicts and natural disasters are braving heat and cold on the slim hope of finding better shelter. Today, the hearts of the Chadian people go out to their brothers and sisters from Morocco and Libya who've suffered from recent tragedies. We convey our deepest condolences. That is why we commend the relevance of the theme of the 78th session of the UN General Assembly. That is to say, rebuilding confidence and reigniting global solidarity, accelerating action on the 2030 Agenda and its sustainable development goals toward peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all. Yes, this fundamental theme speaks volumes. The words chosen have great significance beyond their symbolic import. Yes, it is time to rebuild trust and to reignite solidarity because the UN is increasingly limited in its ability to embody the very values that make up its essence. Yes, trust is urgently needed because our world has lost its bearings, especially due to the practice of double standards. Yes, solidarity is a critical priority because this value, so dear to humanity, has been severely eroded. Today, 
more than before. More than ever, nations must join their efforts and pool their energy to accelerate the implementation of projects and programs aligned with the SDGs. Peace, prosperity, progress, and collective sustainability require major investment from all of our nations, especially the most developed. And this sorely needed action ought to take place inclusively without discrimination to ensure that the trust we strive for becomes reality. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, allow me now to share with you a brief overview of the implementation of a 2030 agenda in my country, Chad. Since the adoption of September 2015 of the agenda, the government of Chad has committed to operationalizing the 17 SDGs that derive from it. This commitment is bolstered by the relevance of the SDGs in light of the context and challenges for development in Chad, especially in all of the fields targeted by the SDGs, including the development of human capital, poverty reduction, and improving the population's living conditions, as well as sustainable environmental management and the consolidation of peace and stability. To this end, the government has incorporated the SDGs among its priorities in its Vision 2030, the Chad We Want, as well as in its National Development Plan for the period 2017 to 2021, extended until December of this year as well as the new National Development Plan that is currently being adopted for 2024 to 2028. The implementation of the SDGs in Chad has taken place, unfortunately, in a context characterized in Australia by dropping prices for raw materials on global markets, repeated attacks by Boko Haram, the COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, inter-ethnic conflicts in neighboring countries, which have had direct impacts on our population, as well as political military conflicts. This situation has now been exacerbated by the war raging in neighboring Sudan. To date, we have taken in more than 400,000 new refugees in addition to the 600,000 reviews that are already refugees that are already living in Chad and have been for several years. In addition to this, there are refugees coming from our neighboring countries and elsewhere. Thus, out of a population of 17 million, almost 2 million are refugees. This is a great burden. For Chad. My country calls for rapid, coordinated, and comprehensive action on behalf of the entire international community to address this humanitarian disaster, which is most likely the worst in the world at this time. Furthermore, Chad welcomes the holding on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly of two summits, one on climate change and the other on universal health coverage. Concerning climate change, Chad, like other UN member states, hopes that the impetus launched by the UN Secretary General on the importance of global action to combat climate change will help to mobilize the requisite resources for the implementation of the Paris Agreement and the rules it contains. With regard to universal health coverage undertaken by our various countries, it remains in the long term the optimal solution to meet 
the need for quality health care at an affordable cost for all, as well as to bolster our health care systems, which have already been undermined by the COVID-19 pandemic. Our government is paying full attention to this issue. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, since the shocking and tragic death of President Idris Deby Itno, may he rest in peace, Chad has begun a process of inclusive and transparent political transition. The first milestone in this transition was the signing of the Doha Agreement between the government and the political military movements in August 2022. This agreement allowed many Chadian exiles and refugees to return to the country. This political will to allow our country to turn over a new page and to rebuild was manifested by the holding of an inclusive and sovereign national dialogue, which brought together the vast majority of political forces of the country over 45 days. Today, the National Union government, which emerged from this dialogue, is hard at work in organizing the constitutional referendum that will determine the shape the state is to take. The adoption of a new constitution by the sovereign people will pave the way toward the gradual restoration of constitutional order within the time frame set by the inclusive and sovereign national dialogue. Led by the head of state, the president of the transition, bold reforms, administrative, judiciary, security, and military in nature have been carried out, and more are underway. In the meantime, constructive and strong measures have been taken from opening up the political space to presidential pardons. These have helped to calm tensions within the political sphere. This trend toward participatory dialogue has also led for the allowed the implementation of a cooperation framework that includes diverse political parties. Ladies and gentlemen, with regard to the Sudanese crisis, Chad reiterates its call for a lasting ceasefire. Chad believes that there is no military solution to the conflict that is currently taking place. The solution lies in dialogue between our Sudanese brothers. Two days ago, September 19th, at the opening of the UN General Assembly, Secretary General Antonio Guterres questioned the global governance embodied by the UN Security Council and the Bretton Woods system in strong terms. I quote, the choice is not reform or the status quo. The choice is reform or ever greater fragmentation. It's reform or breakdown, end quote. What more can be said in light of the resurgence of the current geopolitical rivalries with the risk of a new Cold War that would jeopardize peace throughout the world at a time when multilateralism is undergoing a severe crisis? In light of this difficult reality, Chad supports calls for the reform of the Security Council as reflected in the common African position as laid out in the Ezzawini Consensus and the CERT Declaration. Lastly, for the sake of the fundamental principles 
of the UN, Chad, encourages a solution involving the creation of an independent and sovereign Palestinian state living in security side by side with the state of Israel. Under the same principle, Chad reiterates its call for lifting the embargo imposed against Cuba, an embargo which harms the Cuban population. Thank you for your kind attention.